Hey, hey artists, welcome to another tutorial. Today we're gonna to be painting this adorable pup. It is a Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever. I know, quite the mouthful, but I just, I couldn't resist that beautiful sort of like reddy, orange, rusty fur. It's just so beautiful. So we're gonna get started. So before we get started, if you're interested in truly accelerating your growth and skills when it comes to painting realistic animals, I would love for you to check out the Wildlife Painting Academy. The full real-time tutorial for this particular painting here, this duck tolling retriever, is now inside the Wildlife Painting Academy. So you can get all of my paint mixing and my voice walking you through every single moment and it was just added this morning. So if that sounds good to you, I highly recommend checking that out. All right, let's get started. So I started my painting by transferring my sketch onto my surface, and then I did a dilute acrylic paint wash on top just so I wasn't working on white canvas anymore. Then I am starting with the largest brushes I can. I'm gonna map out the darkest parts of the painting first, and then just sort of block in a rough background. I went with green here because I wanted something that was going to offset that really nice rust color of the fur, and I thought green was a nice option for that. Now I'm starting to block in the sort of darker patches of the fur. So this can be markings, but here it's mostly going to be shadowed areas. So I'm using the largest brush strokes I can at this point because we're just working on our foundation of our underpainting. Because this dog has really beautiful, vibrant fur, it's that nice rusty color. I'm going to be using a lot of burnt sienna here. This is one of my favorite paints for creating these realistic animals and adding a really nice pop of vibrancy. It's a beautiful transparent rusty color. So I'm working into a lot of my underpainting here, but I'm also going to be using it for glazing to really make everything pop. So now I'm going in and adding some titanium white to my uh, brown paints that I've made. And this is gonna start to allow us to build up those highlights. Again, I'm working with the largest brushes I can at this point, just so I can work faster and set a nice solid foundation before we start to jump in with too much detail. You can also see that I'm starting to build up the first little bit of fur texture, but we're gonna have lots of time to go through and actually start to build up that really nice fur detail. So I wanted this dog to have a really nice sort of backlit effect that's going to show off all those little fluffy hairs. Um, so that's what you can see I'm doing here is I'm going in with my lighter paint and making sure I kind of capture that backlighting effect. Um, but I am being careful here because I'm working with oils and that green background is still very wet. So I'm just being very careful that I don't muddy things up too much here. My pup was missing its nose at this point, so I went in and started to block in the nose. And then I'm gonna do the eyes as well, so we don't, you know, keep having to stare at a poor zombie pup with those blank staring eyes. So 
So now I'm going through with my dark paint again. This is mostly burnt umber here, and I'm gonna strengthen some of those shadows. And I'm using a slightly smaller brush so that I can actually start to get in and add a little bit more detail and texture. So now I'm grabbing my one of my secret weapons. I just have a very basic dry brush here, and I am going to ever so slightly, lightly blend out that fur. So now that our fur is blended, I'm gonna go back and start to add some texture and details. I'm working with a slightly smaller brush from before, still working with the Filbert brush because they are just my favorite. And I'm thinning out my paint with a little bit of medium so it's more transparent. And I'm going to town and adding all that delicious detail. You always want to make sure that you keep your reference photo close at hand, especially if you're painting realistic animals. Having a reference photo is just going to totally up your game. Um, you can't be expected to perfectly memorize what every single animal is going to look like. So fall back on that reference photo, use it to see what direction the hair flows in, whether there's, you know, certain shadows or highlights, all those good things. Now I'm going in and adding my highlights here. So this is gonna to start to really flesh out some of those details and our fur texture. Again here, I'm working with more transparent paint, so I'm adding a lot more medium, and this just allows me to build up that texture and detail a little more gradually. And here I'm using a lot of titanium white in with that burnt sienna and burnt umber. When I'm working with the longer hair, like the hair you can see on the shoulder of the dog here, I'm making sure to actually keep my brush strokes longer and more flowing so that it actually gives that effect of long flowing fur. So now I'm going and I am dialing up the fluff factor here. Um, I'm going in and adding in kind of those brightest highlights here, which is really helping to amp up that fluffy look, especially since we have that nice backlighting. Our little guy here was missing one of its most important features, so I went in with a smaller round brush here and I started to add some detail to the eye to just really make it pop and look lifelike.
And same thing with the nose. Now I'm going through and I'm adding in with my brightest paint. So I'm gonna be using a lot more titanium white in my mix here and just adding where those final details are gonna to be to really make things pop. So now on to my favorite part, glazing. I set my painting aside for a few days so it was completely dry and now I'm going in with a glaze. I'm using Liquid Original by Winsor & Newton and I'm mixing in a little bit of Burnt Sienna here so that I can get this really nice vibrant fur back. With this fur here, it really does show off the magic of glazes. It went from a lot more monochromatic and now there's this beautiful punch of color going on. And you could also use glazes to really dial up how much shadow you want, add some different colors to the shadows, boost your saturation, all sorts of great stuff. We talk about glazing a lot in the Wildlife Painting Academy because it's my favorite technique to use and it just seems a, like a little bit almost like a cheat code for getting really vibrant and beautiful animal paintings. So now I'm going through and adding my final details. Here I'm using a cheap little round brush um, and going in with my lightest paint here just to pop in those final details. And we're done. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial on how to paint this Nova Scotia duck tolling, tolling retriever. Huh, that is such a mouthful. This adorable pup here with the most beautiful rusty colored fur. I hope you enjoyed it. And like I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in the full real time tutorial with my voice walking you through every minute of it, check out the Wildlife Painting Academy. If there are any tutorials that you want to see me do, leave a comment in the description of this video and I will definitely add that to my list of paintings and tutorials to do for you. If you like what I'm doing here, hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next tutorial. Do you dream of painting realistic wildlife but you just, you don't know where to begin? Then consider this your personal invitation into the Wildlife Painting Academy. Get access to a large library of real-time, in-depth tutorials, and learn how to paint your favorite animals easily. Check it out in the link of the description of this video.